the mold. Okay, so for today, we're going back to New Brunswick for Tune of the Week to Andrea Toto, one of his wildest tune, Le Cocoron. It's a great tune that is a, a, a pretty strange and, and a little bit microtonal, too. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. But let's just have a listen to Le Cocoron. <laughs> Incredible tune from Andre Toto Savoy. It's a tune that he wrote, and uh, we for a long time we couldn't figure out what Kokoro meant. We only had some festival recordings of it, and the festival recordings are pretty wild. He introduces it, de mes compositions, le ville de Kokoro. And then as the he as the festival progresses, he plays it like two or three times. And by the third time, he just screams out Kokoro, and the audience goes wild, and they get so excited because it's a real popular tune that he wrote. Uh, in his part in New Brunswick. Um, it, it, well, I'll talk a little bit later about what he's doing in the tune. There's some really neat kind of microtonal sounds he's making. But the name Kokoro, it took us a long time to figure out, but what we think it is is, is his pronunciation of cook room. We think it was from a festival in Shipagol that he went to every year, and he either built or there was like a stage next to the cook room where it was kind of a jamming stage, and that was one of his favorite parts of the festival, so we named the tune after that. So Kokoro, cook room. It's a little unclear, <laughs> but that's all the information we have on it, and it's one of my favorite tunes. It's a blast to play for contra dances or dances. It's just super fun to play. Uh, tricky little tune, but I'll break it down now and show you how it works, and then I'll also play just a second. I'm going to play uh, the source recording so you can hear him playing it himself, and he's a really interesting way of playing it. Real de Kokoro. <laughs> C'est tout, c'est une de mes propres compositions. On est justement dans, on est justement dans le poste à de ça. Ça s'appelle le Ré du Cochon. Thank you. 
Kokoro. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to explain a little bit what we're doing here. Um, it's when you look at some of the fiddling in the Acadian Peninsula in northeast New Brunswick, there's a lot of really interesting microtones. I don't have the musical background to really be able to discuss entirely what that means. And there's debate about whether maybe it was just a scratchy fiddler that was playing a little bit out of tune. I don't think that's the case. I know Andrea Toto can be a little bit of a scratchy fiddler, but he's playing it the same way every time, and the rest of the notes sound totally on. So what's really happening is that he's using microtones in a really interesting way. It's also what we've seen with other fiddlers from that area like Claude Ostin. Um, and you can play Kokoro totally straight, you know, if you play it like on the piano or guitar or mandolin or whatever, you can play it totally normally without the microtones and it's still a super fun tune and I'll demonstrate that as well. Um, but once you start to hear it with the microtones, it doesn't sound quite the same. It's really kind of fun. It's supposed to be a little bit off. It's kind of the fun of it. Is it's, you know, from a different world of fiddling when there were different scales and different tonalities. Okay, so here, uh, maybe I'll play it straight, just so you can hear it straight. Now here it is with the microtones. It's all in the fourth finger. The fourth fingers are just a little flat. They're a little bit in between the real flat and then the, you know, the natural. So it's kind of in between. Whenever I play the fourth finger, that's the microtone. I like it that way. Uh, if you don't like it, you can play it the straight way. That's fine too. It's super fun either way. I'll play it slow with the microtones. syncopated bowing again we'll do another lesson on that a little bit later maybe just just to teach that bowing but you can get a lot of jump in the bowing I, should do, I, I guess I'm playing a little bit different when I play it faster. This is a hard tune because it's meant to be played real fast with a lot of syncopation, so it's a little hard to break it down. It doesn't quite work to break it down. I did a little bit wrong when I was teaching it. It's, you keep the D open. So instead, of, instead of doing it this is the way I just taught it. You keep the D open and don't do that G. That's the best I can show and the slowest I can go with that tune. And you get a little feel for some of the syncopation. Again, I'll do another lesson on syncopation another time. 
Uh, it, it involves the use of what, are, what I like to call ghost notes, where you're kind of skipping over a note that's really there. And it's a real uh, hallmark of French Canadian, Acadian, and Quebecois fiddling. But that is the Rive du Coqueron in all its glory. And uh, again, you can play it straight. It sounds nice, straight. <laughs> I love it with that crazy microtone. I can't stop playing it. It's too fun. Tricky tune to learn, but once you start getting going on it, it is just a blast. Rio de Cocorone. 